Here we go, guys. You know, I was thinking today, like, damn, I'm making a lot of videos, but there's so much to talk about, you know. I was thinking about Dak Prescott today. Just the quarterback position in general. I thought about when we first got Dak Prescott. Rookie season, 2016. Uh, put on a show. That was a very, very good season for us. Everything. All cylinders were clicking. Run game was awesome. Blocking was awesome. Defense was awesome. Pass, uh, receivers was awesome. Passing game was awesome. The coaching was pretty good. We were winning games back to back to back to back. We were an unstoppable force that year. We were a super, that was, that team was the perfect ingredient or antidote, whatever you want to call it, for a Super Bowl season. That was our year. Because we had a similar season before that. What was that, 2014? Um, we had Dez and DeMarco and similar season. Still had Romo. We were on our way. Then uh, 2015, we kind of four and twelve. <laughs> uh, then out of nowhere, 2016, we were awesome. Business picked up big time. Uh, we got Romo got hurt. We were like, oh, no, here we go again. And uh, Dak got in the game, and <laughs> oh, my God, I, I can't even describe it. I can't even describe the magic, the power that, that I felt. That's when the power, that was when the power was born. The power was born in 2016. I didn't have the power back in the 90s. I was still a kid, you know, living at home. A teenager. Um, but now, but, but, but 2016, I got the power. And that was an electrifying. Full of electricity. That was an electrifying year. I, I enjoyed that year as a Cowboy fan. I really enjoyed that year. Now. 2017 totally different I'm going to tell you why when I say this y'all might not agree and that's fine that's what the comment section is for if it wasn't for y'all I wouldn't have nobody to run my mouth to or talk about the Cowboys with. let me tell you why now, I think they should come up with a rule for quarterbacks. I think quarterbacks should sit on the bench unless you just desperately need one. <laughs> I think the quarterbacks should just sit on the bench for about a year or two uh, before they start. You, get, you had those lucky quarterbacks you know, that, that that were able to be successful in their rookie season. Dak was one of them. But to be really successful, like Big Ben, I think he won the Super Bowl his rookie season. Uh, Dan Marino just pushed right in there. He was great. Uh, Troy Eggman was pretty good when he first, because we had a a, 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 a a mastermind of Jimmy Johnson putting a team together. So he had an awesome line. And, you know, that first season he was uh, – you know, and then that second season, he was, okay, getting a little better. Then he, boom, boom, boom. So, uh, th th it takes a special quarterback to be good right off within that first or second year. Uh, all the great quarterbacks, if you think back, if you think back and look back and do your research, all the great quarterbacks sat behind great great quarterbacks and sat on the bench. Joe Montana sat behind uh, Steve DeBerg. He wasn't just the greatest quarterback in the world, but... 
Steve DeBerg was pretty good. And, and Joe Montana ended up being, in my view, still the greatest quarterback of all time. Uh, Aaron Rodgers sat behind Brett Favre, the gunslinger. Uh, who else was there? Drew Bledsoe. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, Tom Brady sat behind Drew Bledsoe. You know, Drew Bledsoe just wasn't the greatest quarterback of all time either, but he was good enough to, to, to teach and to show Bledsoe, to kind of guide him. Uh, Steve Young sat behind Joe Montana. You know, and the list goes on and on and on. Some Most quarterbacks need that. You see, where I'm getting at is 2016, Dak Prescott was mentored and coached on the sideline, hands-on, hands-on, by Tony Romo. And he was awesome. He was able to see things that he used to, that he couldn't in college. Romo, as you can see, I, I wish Romo could have just hung around. I wish Romo could have been our, 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 maybe our, our offensive coordinator one day. But if you watch the games that Romo commentates, he's kind of like John Madden. He gets out there, he draws the X's and O's. He said what he, he says, what he should do, what that player should do, or what you know, boom, boom, boom. He knows the game. Tony Romo sat on the sideline for four years before he got out there. That is the best uh, training for a quarterback. A quarterback, guys. Quarterback is the leader of the team. Some most quarterbacks need that. I think that's Dak Prescott needed that. Um, he was kind of forced out there. You know, Tony Romo was hurting. Up, oh, next man up. You know, and he did good. Dak Prescott did really good, but he had a good parent behind him. There I go again with the with the parent analogy. Uh, a, a lot of Cowboy fans have turned. They're oh, Dak sucks. You know, I, I don't think it's. I think Dak could be a good quarterback. I still think he can. Uh, you know, we all panicked that first game. Hell, I did. I know I did. I'm, I'm passionate. I, I like to win every game. I don't give a damn if it's a preseason game or a blue and white game. I want to win it somehow. Uh, I'm just, that's just, you know, me playing a sport on different levels. That's just how competitive I am. Uh, but did, 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 did Jerry Nim set Dak up for failure? You know, now... Romo, Romo's gone. 2017 comes to play. And uh, Zeke is, he's out for suspensions on and off, you know. That's a, a negative vibe going in the locker room. Uh, it's dysfunction in 2017. So his true colors, Dak's, Dak was put on blast. His true colors kind of came out. Um, so I, that's why I didn't blame yesterday's game on Dak. Because... You know, it's, it's, it's not his fault. It's who's teaching him. Kellen Moore? <laughs> and that's why I go back on the thinking and the philosophy of the Dallas Cowboys front office is, what are you thinking? I didn't go to school for coaching. I played the game in college, arena football. That's the highest level I got. Tried out for a couple of teams or two, but uh, I, 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 I never was a coach. I always wanted to be one, but um, coaching is something that you you bring home. Just like my wife, she's a teacher, and you know, last night she's at home grading papers and analyzing and trying to find her. Uh, you know, every kid is different. No kid is the same. And trying to find, trying to analyze them and, and trying to find kids' strengths and weaknesses and, you know, going over things. You bring the work home. And coaches should be the same thing. Now, I don't know what they do at home. It's none of my business. But um, back to Dak Prescott, uh, if he had the right guidance, guys, he'd be dangerous. Dangerous. Um Dak's having a problem with just basic fundamentals of the game. It's coaching. Oh, Dak sucks. No, 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 no. That's just like saying if a child failed a test. Oh, he sucks. He's stupid. Like if your child failed, you know, one little, one little exam or one little test and all the other kids in the class 
Say, you stupid. Your child is stupid. Same thing with Dak. Y'all, Dak sucks. They have never played a game in their life. Probably a lot of people that are saying that probably never touched the football field. But they say, oh, Dak sucks. Let's get him out of there. Who are we going to put in there? <laughs> Who's available? Who wants to come to the Cowboys with all this shenanigans, this carnage? It's who's teaching him. And I, I know I sound like the, a, a broken record and each style of video may be the same, but I just wanted to clarify the quarterback position. I honestly think that it should be uh, they should sit on the bench. When, when you draft a quarterback, I don't give a damn how good they are in college unless we just desperately need one. Unless a team just desperately, desperately needs a quarterback. But they still need to, if you're going to put a rookie quarterback, make sure you put a veteran that's been in the game right behind him. Dak has no leadership. He has no help. You got Kellen Moore teaching him. Kellen Moore never started an NFL game in his life. <laughs> Linehan, these guys don't know how to guide him. Teach him his fundamentals. You got to crawl before you walk. You got to know how to throw the ball before you can throw a touchdown pass. You know, and Dak can throw to. I mean, hell, he's throwing the dares. He's throwing the, you know, and and another thing about Dak, and this is the last thing. Um, Dak, he really, really, really second and third guesses himself. He's so scared to make a mistake. Romo just threw that damn ball up to Dez. Dez went and got it. Touchdown. Dak's scared to do that because he doesn't want to mess up. Kind of like a robot. Robot not going to throw that ball if, if, if he doesn't see a clear path. You know what I mean? Um, we got New York coming up this week. Sunday night game. Not going to estimate. They, they lost, you know, last week too. But I'm not gonna underestimate them. They're looking for they're searching for the first win. And when you're searching, you play harder. That's why that first game is important because you play hard because you wanna you wanna win that first game and you wanna say, oh, we won our first game. We cool, we we in a rhythm now. We're still searching. We're still searching for that note on that guitar. We're still trying to find that, trying to tune that piano, trying to figure out, trying to get in a rhythm. When you got that first game in the books and you you won, you know how that you, you you your head is doing this. Oh, okay. Yeah. But but when you haven't won yet, you still like I can't quite, huh? No, I I just can't quite hear it yet. So we still searching. This is game one. When you when you're when you're 0 and 1, every game is the first game. Trust me, I know. Every game is the first game again. Up oh, we Just like the Cleveland, Cleveland Browns, bless their hearts. They still searching. Years and years. Uh, game one. Game one. If you don't understand, I, I, I don't know what to tell you, but that, that's a simple, simple way I can put it, you know. So this is game one again for us because we're still searching for that first win. But if y'all agree with me, man, let me know. If you disagree, let me know. I, I don't, you know. It is what it is. Freedom of speech. It's America. But, uh, hey, guys, that's all I got, man. I'm not going to hold y'all too much longer. I just wanted to kind of get that off my chest about the quarterback position. Uh, you're the captain of the team. Um, he just needs guidance. Dak needs a lot of guidance. Don't want to let – you don't want to let a, a, a wasted he's – a, he's a big guy. He's a big guy. What, Dak? 6'2", 6'3", 250? Uh, he can take a lick and keep on ticking. He's a tough quarterback. Uh, he can run the ball. Um, he just needs confidence in what he's doing. He, he needs to turn it into a craft. Make it fun. Brett Favre used to get out there. Tony Romo used to get out there. Made it fun. You know, you get good at something, you make it fun. That's what he needs to learn. He needs to get comfortable with it. It's, he's into his third season now, so he needs to get comfortable real fast. Or it's not going to be, when, when you're not comfortable by doing something, you get bored and you, you, you're confident, you lose your confidence. I don't care what it is. Make sure you stay cowboyed up, guys, because you never know what it is.